Well, hey everybody, let's talk about something really important, uh, a decision you are probably going to be need to make early in your live streaming endeavors, and that is, how are you gonna get the video out of the camera to where you want it? Because there are actually a lot of options. So like most PTZ cameras, my example here, my Honey Optics, comes with many different ports around back some of which you are probably familiar with, some of which you are probably not. So let's take a quick look at those, shall we? All right, so back here you're gonna find some that you could ignore pretty much straight off, and these are these old legacy um, serial type connections, unless you've got um, some really kind of old school equipment going on, you're not gonna touch those. The ones that are the important ones to, to pay attention to are this bottom run. First, you got this connector right here. This is called a B and C connector. Um, that's the name of the style of the connector. Um, and this is your SDI output. You may not be familiar with SDI, but it is actually uh, the standard that is used uh, in the broadcast industry um, and in most professional setups. So you will run across this, and it's actually a really good one. The one you're probably used to seeing is the HDMI connector, um, which is gonna be and work exactly like the HDMI connection on your video game or your television or whatever. So you may be thinking that may be your go-to. That's the one uh, you may default to thinking about using because you know what it is, but that may not always be the best case. There are a couple other options as well. Um, one is this one does have a network connection and this is an NDI capable camera. I've got a video on NDI uh, specifically, so you may wanna check that out. So that could be an option for you. The other one is this USB. Now this is a USB-C camera, some of them, which has got the new standard on it, um, some of them are, uh, especially the older ones, are going to have a USB 2.0 or USB 3.0 uh, connector on the back, but it's going to be a standard USB connection. Most all of these cameras, this one included, can be used as a USB camera hooked up to your computer, just like any other USB camera hooked up to your computer. You can use it just like you would use any of them, uh, which is a great option if you want just a very, very simple setup, say in a classroom um, or something like that. Um, you can just hook the USB uh, from here to your computer and use it in Skype or Zoom or whatever. Now what's important to note is most cameras can't be powered off of the USB, um, so you're still gonna have to hook it up to power, but you can hook it up that way if you wanna get the video off through that. But what I really wanna talk about in this video are the SDI option and the HDMI option and, we, and why you might want to choose the one that you are less familiar with. So your HDMI output on your camera is gonna work exactly like you would expect it to, and it's gonna hook up just like you might hook up your Xbox to your television. Uh, or, in this case, you may be hooking your camera up to whatever your capture device is. Maybe you've got an ATM uh, Mini or Mini Pro, um, a Sling Studio, or maybe you've got a box like one of these. What this guy does, and they're available in all sorts of varieties on, on Amazon right now, I'll link to this one, um, takes an HDMI um, input from the camera, takes an HDMI input there, uh, and then converts it to a USB signal that can be interpreted by your computer. And again, just like using uh, the USB out on the camera itself, um, suddenly your camera shows up to your computer uh, like any other HDMI webcam, meaning that it will be usable in Zoom or in Skype um, or in, uh, for live streaming purposes, things like OBS, um, Wirecast, um, vMix, and software like that. That actually works pretty well. Why would you want to use HDMI over just simply plugging this in straight for USB? Well, USB, it all comes down to length. In fact, in all of these decisions, it really comes down, at the end of the day, to cable length. USB works really only at about 10 feet or less. So you, if you're gonna plug it directly from your uh, camera into your computer, you wanna be within about 10 uh, feet uh, uh, between the two, because that's about the, the, the length of the distance you're gonna get. If you wanna wire it in through HDMI, and maybe like an HDMI converter box, well then you're looking at a maximum cable length of around 75, sometimes 100 feet. Uh, now that seems like a lot, but if you have a larger venue, um, 
with a, you know with with large spaces and you want to start doing multiple cameras in multiple places you're going to find out that that length of that that length of cable can become limiting fairly quickly the truth is hdmi as a cable and as a standard was never really designed with those long distances in mind it was designed to connect devices to televisions and DVD players uh, and and things like that. So over time, as the standard has matured, um, it's been able to take on greater and greater lengths. But the the basic rule of thumb has been and will continue to be: the longer the length of your HDMI cable, uh, the more chances are you're going to run into problems. And you really want to avoid running HDMI over 75 feet. So what do you do if you want that wired connection? Uh, because there's nothing as reliable as a wired connection, uh, but you have a greater run. That's where SDI becomes your friend. So. This is an SDI cable. Um, it kind of looks like an old school coax cable, like actual cable cable might have come into your house, but with a different end on it. And that's kind of what it is. Um, it does use these BNC style quick connector ends, which are really easy to use. Um, the nice thing about this cable too, is the ends are not really all that much bigger than the cable itself which means running the cable, physically getting the cable from point A to point B is an actually easier thing to do than those wide-ended HDMI cables. Um, sometimes you can run into problems. If you need to drill holes, you can drill a smaller hole to run this through than you can through HDMI. Um, and then you're just gonna connect it on one end to your camera and then run it back to wherever it is you want to, uh, the video to be. These cables can safely be up to 300 feet long. That, if you've watched the NDI video, is going to sound familiar. 300 feet is coincidentally also about the length that your Ethernet run that powers your data. And if you're using power over Ethernet, <laughs> uses your power too, um, can also run about 300 feet. So one of the best ways to actually cable in one of these cameras if you want to is to run it two cables. One Ethernet cable um, that's going to carry your data and your power for it. And then also this SDI cable uh, that's then going to bring the video signal back. And these SDI cables uh, can carry uh, the same quality of video, you know, full 1080, whatever you need, um, as an HDMI cable can. So you're not sacrificing quality, you're getting um, an easier installation um, and a lot more reliability because this standard was designed for video production in mind. Now, what do you do with an SDI connection on the other end? You're probably asking yourself. Well, there are, SDI converter boxes um, like this guy here. Um, this one actually does either SDI or HDMI in and then turns it into a Thunderbolt 3 uh, connection that can run to your computer. So that's going to take a relatively recent computer that has that kind of connection on it um, if you want to run one of these guys. And that will get the signal into OBS or anything else. Um, you can also get um, converter boxes like this that will actually convert the SDI to HDMI which if you're running ATM Mini, you're running Sling Studio, any of those things, that is going to be probably one of your best options. Let SDI carry the load over the long run because that's what it's designed to do. And once you've got it back to your sound booth or whatever it is you're going to want it, take a short little run um, of HDMI cable, which is what it wants to do to run from a converter box into wherever it is that you need it to be. Let me show you um, a few of these different options in action. All right, don't adjust your screen. There are four of me now. What I've done is I've connected my PTZ camera um, on my desk uh, to my computer in multiple ways. It's connected through SDI and HDMI across the top. Um, it's also connected over NDI and a local switch um, on my desk in one corner. Um, and then finally, the one I'm actually looking into is the FaceTime camera on my laptop. A couple of things that I noticed, uh, the SDI and HDMI uh, inputs look basically exactly the same. And as I look at the stream quality um, coming in in the software, they are exactly the same. Uh, the NDI, you'll notice, actually has a little bit of a delay to it, as I wave my hand here. 
Uh, that's to be expected. There's a lot more processing going on, encoding and decoding, um, and then transporting it um, over the data network. Uh, it's going to lead to just a little bit of latency there. So that's something that you might want to account for um, down the road uh, as you're putting your system together. And then finally, just to note that you know the, the FaceTime camera on my brand new, very expensive laptop seems to have the white balance off. Um, I'm actually getting, as you can see, you get this bit of a yellowish hue um, on the, on my FaceTime where I'm getting a really good, uh, clean, uh, true to life on my PTC camera, which is, I guess, good. Sure. So one of the things you no doubt noticed in that video is you can have multiple outputs running at the same time. And that can be really helpful. Maybe you want a long SDI run back to your sound booth or wherever it is you're doing your broadcasting from uh, to do your broadcast. You could also at the same time take the HDMI feed out of the camera and feed uh, a screen closer by. Uh, one where you're basically maybe monitoring what the camera sees. We've talked about doing this where we have a camera on the back wall of our sanctuary um, and we have a run uh, from the camera to where the live streaming is and we've thought, you know, on the other side of that wall is a large gathering space. Uh, and so the idea is, well, maybe we should run an HDMI run, short one, out of the camera to a screen on the other side of the wall uh, in the large gathering space. And that way, that camera can always be showing people in the large room what's going on in the sanctuary, whether the live stream is on or not. And the nice thing is, since it's a live HDMI feed, um, it would be in real time. It wouldn't have that you know two or three second delay you can have just sh showing people the stream uh, itself. You know, whatever you want to do there. You may never use that, but it's nice to know that you can. All right, well, I hope you uh, found this little overview uh, of cabling and your port options uh, interesting and helpful. Uh, there's all sorts of ways um, that you can use these cameras, both for large, large live streaming setups, uh, but don't forget about them for things like classrooms, um, boardrooms, meeting rooms, uh, things like that as well. I think that's where being able to plug it in USB into your computer could be really, really helpful. Uh, imagine doing that for like Zoom classes uh, or things like that like that. Um, it's, it's a pretty killer option. All right. Well, I hope this was helpful. Thank you for joining us. Until we see you again, have a good day. Hey, everybody. If you found that video helpful, please hit like and subscribe and also check the video description for links to any products you've seen in today's videos. Doing that really helps support this channel. Also, don't forget to leave a comment with any questions that you may have. A lot of the content I do is based directly on the questions of the feedback you give. So keep that coming and I will keep making them. Thank you.